I'm going to be starting this series especially because I want you all to be able to follow me um, so you can pre-read the text um, and kind of know where we're going and that way I think it'll be even more engaging for you. So we'll be in 1 Samuel 16 and we're going to move through the text. Things I want you to pay attention to in the text is is David's humility. We want to, you know, just pay attention how the Bible describes him. Samuel 16, let's get started with a word of prayer. Father, we come in the name of Jesus. Thank you. Holy Spirit for being with us. You said where two or more are gathered together in your name, you will be in the midst. Lord, we thank you for this time of study. Holy Spirit, you are the teacher. Teach each one of us. Give us an ear to hear and a heart to receive what the Spirit says unto the church. You are speaking even now, Holy Spirit. Speak to your people afresh what they need to hear to bring them encouragement and boldness and new strength, oh God. I decree and declare new strength in the name of Jesus. Encourage in the name of Jesus. I bind the spirit of discouragement and despondency and depression that is attacking God's people and weariness. We thank you, Lord, that you renew our youth like an eagle, O oh God. We will not and shall not get weary in well-doing. Focused on you, O oh God, and we thank you, O oh God, that on today and on tonight, O oh God, that you would renew us and revive us and refresh us and restore us as we continue to walk in your way. In Jesus' name, amen. What I want to talk about tonight is going from anointment to appointment. So in the first verse or the first couple of verses of chapter 16 of 1 Samuel, if we remember, it starts with the prophet Samuel. Right. He loved, clearly loved Saul because it starts with you have mourned for Saul long enough. So oftentimes if you have a seeing gift, a prophetic gift, or you walk in the office of a prophet or God allows you to see, you will see a person on the decline spiritually. And oftentimes people think, why doesn't somebody intervene? Why doesn't somebody do something? Clearly Samuel saw this because the Bible tells us that he mourned for Saul. Saul wasn't dead. So he was mourning for him, right? But he was not dead physically. But what the prophet Samuel saw was him dying spiritually. He saw the man of God, the king, dying spiritually, and he mourned for him. But he did not have the authority to overturn it, not even to intervene in it. All he could do was obey God. So what he did was obey God, right? So he mourned for him because in his self, in his flesh, he loved Saul. So he mourned for him but yet he still had to do his God-given job so you know as we're looking for promotion and asking God for promotion they're gonna have they're going to be some very hard things that we have to do so just like Samuel he didn't necessarily want to anoint another king because he knew that was going to be the official end of Saul but he had to do it because he's not in charge. So a prophet only speaks and says what thus says the Lord. It doesn't mean that you or I will always be happy doing it. It doesn't mean we'll always rejoice doing it. It does not mean that we'll always get to deliver good news. It doesn't mean that we'll always get to, to say things that people like or want to hear or clap or be glad. You know, we know that a lot of times that the prophets will give a prophecy and have to run to keep people from killing them. You know, so don't think that, oh, I'm going to be anointed a prophet. You, you may very well be, but that doesn't mean that there won't come some difficulties and some very hard things that you'll have to speak. So this is, you know, as we talk about from anointment to appointment, we want to look at sort of the entirety of the text and sort of glean for each part of us. You know, each one of us are in a different place in our lives and have a different gift. But I want to highlight things because there's so many people watching that you might get, you know, or be able to glean from it what God has for you. Somebody asked for prayer. We're, we're, we're going to um, study the text right now. 
and as the Holy Spirit leads, then um, if if the Holy Spirit leads that way, and um, then I'll pray for people after. But we're gonna we're gonna study right now. Okay, so we know that he filled his flask with oil and he goes to Jesse's house. And he looks at, in the natural, Jesse's sons, and he picks the most obvious ones that look in the natural like leaders. We already know, the Bible tells us that you can't look at a person and tell whether that person is going to be a leader for God. The Bible tells us in the third verse um, that the Lord said, I will show you which one of his sons to anoint for me. Because Samuel went in, even though he was a prophet, he still was looking in the natural, thinking he could choose, pick out or observe or just see in the natural who God chose. And as I told you the other day, God is choosing the non-obvious candidate. He's picking out those who humanity has thrown away, who said they're not going to be anything. I'm not going to choose them. They're not going to make it. They're not going to be nothing. I remember them. No, we can't look at a person and say whether or not they will be used by God. And in the seventh verse, it says, but the Lord said to Samuel, don't judge by his appearance or his height. You know, people talk about short people in a lot of countries, even they won't choose a person that's real short as a leader because people are looking at height. People are looking at stature and they're thinking that is the measure of a man or a woman. But the Lord said, don't judge by appearance or height, for I have rejected him. He was talking about one of Samuel's older sons. So think about Jesse and his having to rethink who he thought was even going to be chosen out of his sons. Right? That's right. God looks at the heart. So, so this is Jesse as he's pushing, you know, his older sons because those are who people automatically think is going to be the leaders, the oldest one that gets the most imparted into them. They think the oldest one, and in most cultures, the oldest one is the one that is chosen to sort of be the leader in the family. The next leader after the matriarch and patriarch have gone on, they become the next natural leaders, but not so in the kingdom. We see over and over in the Bible where God skips generations and he skips over people and people are chosen by their character, not by their birth order. See, you know, a lot of times we're looking at people and we're, we're looking at these sort of signs, you know, they were born first and they were born last and, and this and that. But, but God said, no, right? He judges as someone said, and it says it right in the Bible, he judges by the heart. So as we go to the 12th verse, we're in 1 Samuel 16, verse 12. So Jesse sent for him. So David wasn't even there when he asked, when the prophet Samuel asked for Jesse to assemble all of his sons, he excluded David because he was out with the sheep. He didn't even include him in the all. So he, he, he so counted him out that he didn't even include him in the bring all your sons to me. He didn't. David still, he didn't, he didn't even send for him. So Jesse sent for him in the 12th verse when all the other sons were not chosen. And he was dark. He was dark, the Bible tells us. And he was probably dark because he was outside. He was outside with the sheep and the goats without a covering. He's going to be dark. He's out in the sun without protection. He's done some hard work. But the Bible says he was handsome. And he had beautiful eyes. And so when the Bible gives us these kinds of descriptions, it's not just talking about a physical description. There's always something spiritual to be gleaned when, when a description is given of a person in the Bible. It's not just wanting us to think that this is handsome in the way we think of handsome, you know, and not in the way we think of beautiful eyes. You know, the Bible tells us in verse 13 that David stood amongst his brothers and Samuel took the flask of olive oil. He had brought and anointed David. And the Bible tells us the spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon David from that day. 
So he was anointed there in verse 13. He was pointed out by God in verse 12 and anointed in verse 13. But this is 1 Samuel 16. But is king sitting on the throne king right so that's a lot that happens in those verses and so the reason I said from anointment to appointment because we're here he's anointed so we think okay I'm anointed I'm gonna get the position then no not all the time I remember when I was ordained and when I was ordained you know it's very few people are ordained at that time and get a church very few people are anointed at that time and go right into that service right yes so but what we see is is that we're going to see the process see we think in our minds God's anointed me I, I should run off and, and and run and go and, and let me start and I don't want nobody holding me back and people are trying to stop me and they're trying to keep me from getting to well, a lot of times what we don't realize is this is the choosing process. This is the setting apart process. This is the pulling out process where God separated him from his brothers. Yes, but now it's the proving process. So yes, I've called you out. I've anointed you. I've separated from your brothers, but, but... You still got to go through some things because you were a shepherd before out with the sheep and the goats. And now I have to teach you how to be over a whole land full of people. Right? Because he's going to be king. I talked a little bit the last time I was on about how Saul was trying to kill David, but I want you to see how things change. In the very beginning, we can see how people notice David's character. So Saul, so after the spirit of the Lord comes upon David mightily, that's verse 13. In verse 14, watch what happens. Now the spirit in your Bible, it should have a capital S meaning Holy Spirit. Now the spirit of the Lord left Saul, meaning the Holy Spirit. And the Lord sent a tormenting spirit, small s, meaning not from not the Holy Spirit, that filled him with depression and fear. But when you see the capital S spirit is just giving you a clue in the English Bible that it's referring to the Holy Spirit. And when you see spirit with a small s, it is either referring to an evil spirit or a person's spirit, right? Either one. You have to sort of discern that from the text. What is it talking about? David's anointed and we see in the very next verse that the spirit leaves Saul. There can't be two people anointed king can't be two people anointed king at the same time can't be two two people spiritually in the exact same position so David's put in position and Saul is ousted spiritually from the position but yet in the natural he's still in the position why because it's a process there's a process working simultaneously where Saul is going down and David's coming up and they're passing each other like this and so, as I told you before, prophetically, that there's going to be a shift in the spirit. It's already taking place where leaders are going to be going off the scene. Some are retiring, some are passing away, some are, you know, shifting and all kinds of things are happening. But other people are being prepared. Yes, they've already been anointed, but they're not in the position yet. And so we're going to see these sort of shifts and transitions, but it is not an immediate thing happening because why? Because God is preparing the one who's coming in and the one that's going out is having sort of a descending and the one that's coming in is ascending, but both 
of their character is being seen and highlighted through this process. So I want you to look at Saul's character and I also want you to look at David's character because we don't just want to see positively what can happen with us when we don't handle the anoint when we handle the anointing correctly. We need to see what can happen when we don't handle it correctly. Because when God sits people down, amen, we have to sit down. There, there. He's the only one who anoints, right? And so, when he says it's time to sit down, we have to sit down. When it's, you know, some God says to some people, you, you never retire. You'll never, you know, you'll die in, in the office and you'll die in that position. And other people, he, he has for them sort of to pass the mantle and sort of, you know, go in a different capacity, right? And so, these are things that God does that we are not always privy to, but the people who are in those positions are right they know okay so now in the 17th verse Saul said find me someone who plays well and bring him here so watch David's character that people have already seen who he is one of Saul's servants says one of Jesse's sons from Bethlehem is a talented heart player not only that he is a brave warrior he's given Saul David's resume he says he's a talented heart player not only that he's a brave warrior not only that he's a man of war not only that he is a man of good judgment not only that he is a fine-looking young man not only that, the Lord is with him. So one of Saul's servants gives him David's resume. So D Saul has David's resume. He knows who he is. The Bible tells us in the 21st verse that Saul loved David. Saul Love David very much. Blessings, Yolanda. Saul loved David very much. And David became his armor bearer. So, when we talk about blessings to you all, when we talk about how the relationship changed, how it shifted, and how Saul began to look at David with a jealous eye, it did not start that way. It didn't start that way. But when Saul realized that David was going to replace him, that's when jealousy began to come upon him. Even when the Spirit of God left him, it said depression and fear came. But jealousy came from his own soul, from his own evil eye, from his own looking at David in an envious way. That's when jealousy came in. But at first, Saul loved David. He probably spoke well of him. We know that Saul's family also loved David. We know two of his daughters, right? He told him his oldest daughter could be married to her. And then he took that back and had, Dave, had his oldest daughter marry someone else. And then Michael ended up marrying David, right? Because Saul had... Um, given the older daughter to someone else. And then we know from the last text that Jonathan became his best friend, David, that is, and loved David and actually helped David escape his father. That even though Saul had been rejected as king, he was still in the position. And even though David was anointed as king, he was not in the position yet. Talking about transition how hard sometimes transition can be. And that's why we're going to continue to look at, at this, this sort of saga uh, of David and Saul because I want us to understand transition. It, 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 when I talk about us shifting and us being in position and God shifting us, I don't want us to think of in the natural about me just going from one place to another without understanding the challenges that may face us along the way. We, we must, saints of God, be prepared for the shift. With, with his great resume of how 
talented he was and a great heart player and, and how he's a man of war and he's talented and, and all those things. Yes, it started that way. Oh, even David served Saul as his armor bearer, one of his closest people. He moved him in. He brought him into the palace. But, but don't think that the very people who help you along the way won't turn on you. There is always going to be that. I, I'm not telling you to look at people suspiciously. I'm telling you to be sober minded, to watch and to pray, to not be naive. You can't afford to be naive as the people of God to think it's going to come into a position without adversity. There's not only going to be Goliaths and giants, they're going to be people who profess to be on the same team who will oppose you, who will come against. They will not prevail, but it doesn't mean that they won't try to stop it. Sometimes equal to higher people can see in the spirit realm who Ikoromahaya you are and they might see you Ikoromahaya coming up Ikoromahaya don't think Ikoromahaya for a minute Ikoromahaya that everybody is clapping for you that everybody is glad for you don't think for a second that even David's brothers were so happy amen as they sat in the in his presence and watched him be anointed don't think for a second Ikoromokoshanda that they were not Ikoromokoshanda Ramahaya looking at him with a little bit of silence I like how in the heck did that happen? How did I get passed over? How did this happen? Don't think for a minute that your anointing does not come with a snake coming beside you, coming around you. Amen. Amen. You're right. Joseph's story. Daniel. Don't think for a minute. That you just going to prance up to that seat without somebody trying to stick their foot out and trip you. Don't think for a minute. Don't get there without adversity, without a Judas. Don't think equal to higher for a minute. After David was anointed, the Bible tells us that he went to help his father. He went back in, in, in chapter 17 and verse 15. It's verse 14, it said David was the youngest son. And verse 15 tells us David went back and forth so he could help the father with the sheep. But wait a minute. He was anointed in chapter 16 and in, in, in chapter 17 it says he went back to go help the father with his sheep so he went back to his job he went back to the job he had before he was anointed to be king he went back to his job he went back to the post office amen and was throwing packages he went back he went back and put the name tag on as he went back he went back to help his father at their grocery store he went back after he was anointed and waited until God opened the door. My God. Sometimes we're wondering, well, how come, I, you know, people spoke this over me and, 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 you know, this was prophesied over me. Why hasn't it happened? Why? Ha because immediately from you being anointed is not the time where we go straight from anointing into appointment. There is still that process. Oh God, it is not always instantaneous. It is not always, that's good, Ikoto Mahaya. Oftentimes God, Ikoto Boko keeps us and he keeps us humble and, and he keeps making us stronger and he keeps Ikoto Boko Shikara Mahaya teaching us how to fight and he keeps Ikoto Boko Shana checking our character and allowing us Ikoto Mahaya to grow in the spirit. David had been out there with the sheep and the goats and he went back to help his father. 
Hallelujah. Hey, you can't skip it. That's right. We got to go through it. And, and, and even though he was young, the Bible tells us, he wasn't afraid. Because when that spirit came on Saul, what did it do? It made him fearful. He became afraid. And when you're a warrior, you can't be afraid of the enemy. And so he could not defeat Goliath. And therefore Israel could not defeat Goliath because the king, the leadership, the head was scared. Afraid there was no way to defeat Goliath because Saul was scared. Not only was Saul scared, the Bible tells us that Jesse's oldest three sons were already in the Israelite army and they were too because it tells us that the Israelite army and all of Israel was afraid. That includes right Jesse's three sons that were in that army. So they couldn't defeat Goliath. But what David did, amen, it flows down, you right from the head. But what David did, when he went back out with the sheep, he kept encountering those adversaries and those predators that would come and try to steal the sheep. He continued to encounter them and he must have continued to defeat them. He continued to gain experience and strength, not knowing that that same strength was going to be used to defeat Goliath, but he was not afraid. The Bible tells us we're going to go skip down and then we're going to end here for tonight in the 17th verse. That we know that Goliath continued to taunt Israel. He had on this complete armor. The Bible tells us in the 17th chapter that he was nine feet tall. It tells us that he was a champion. It gives us Goliath's resume. He was nine feet tall. He was a champion. Had a bronze helmet, a bronze coat, a bronze javelin, an armor bearer that walked in front of him. And he stood and taunted Israel. The Bible tells us in 17 and 11. When Saul and the Israelites heard this, they were terrified and deeply shaken. Terrified and deeply shaken. That's why they could not defeat Goliath. Because fear had come in to Saul and they couldn't defeat him. Verse 13 says, Jesse's three oldest sons had already joined Saul's army to fight the Philistines. David was the youngest that keeps setting up an unlikely victory. The Bible tells us in the 24th verse that as soon as the Israelite army saw Goliath, they began to run away in fright, afraid. David's brothers, he came out to see this Philistine. He said, who is this pagan Philistine in verse 26 that, that has been allowed to defy the armies of the living God? Who is this pagan Philistine that y'all letting scare you to death? And his brother said, what are you doing out here? You only came out here to see what's going on. You don't have no business out here. He tells them, tells David, why don't you go out back with them few sheep you have? You only you only taking care of a few sheep. You're not really doing anything. Go back out there with them. You're supposed to be taking care of the sheep. You prideful. You you deceitful. You only want to see what's going on here. Wait a minute. Why are they talking to him like this? Right? He, they watched him be anointed in front of them in verse 16 in chapter 16. So we can see a little bit here of how the brothers talked to David even after they watched him be anointed. So don't think you still might not be disrespected by your family members. Don't matter, right? Don't don't think because <laughs> you're anointed <laughs> that they not gonna say who you think you are. <laughs> you bring a word to me. Who do you who you need to go sit down? What are you doing over here? You still need to be at the kids' table. Don't think, Ikora Mahaya, for a second, 
that everybody equal to Bahia who knew you before just because you get anointed equal to Bahia it is going to respect you as that don't don't even think it but David says don't worry about this Philistine David told Saul I'll go fight him he was confident but Saul says don't be ridiculous you can't fight him you're only a boy he's a man of war but David was not afraid this is this this is it for tonight as far as the text goes I, I just feel like I just need to speak this over you all no matter where you are in the process don't be tricked out of understanding that it is a process that you are going somewhere that you've already left Ikoro Bahia Egypt and, and even to get to the promised land is a process that that to get there Ikoro Bahia requires a journey Ikoro Boko Shanara Mahaya when you leave any one place going to another place you, nobody knows what you encounter along the way but there's no way to get from one place to another place without going on a journey to get from one place to another place that you've never been you're going to ha have to take a route you've never been on you have never been on this route of course it can't look familiar you can't know the way how could you know the way you've never been there before I've never been there before it's no way for me to be comfortable in the process on a route I've never been on going to a place I've never been so so we don't want to be uncomfortable but that's the process of growth that's how we get from one place to another how could we be comfortable in it it have to be familiar it's not it's not going to be you've never been there I've never been there I've never even been on this route before how could it be so I'm going to be uncomfortable. I, I'm going to get nervous. I'm going to have to depend on God because I don't know what's in the next step, what's in the next place, what's around the next corner. God wants us to be dependent on him. We have to be because even when we get to the place he has for us, we're going to have to completely depend on him because it's not going to be our intelligence that's get, that gets us there. It's not going to be favor with man that's going to get us there. And thank God for that, but it's going to be the anointing that keeps us there. We're going to have to be dependent on God to get us there and keep us there. So in the process, God wants us to learn how to depend on him and him alone. That's one of the most important things in the process. He's going to teach us how he taught David how to control your anger, how to control your flesh, how to keep from retaliating against people, how to forgive people. All of these things, how to not consider a wrong that's been done unto you, how to be a leader and lead people that can't stand you, how to do right by people who do wrong by you. This is part of the process. How do we love people and feed them and take care of them? The same person I know that's trying to kill me, when I get the opportunity, I can't do it to them. The same people that are mistreating me, I'm not going to be able to mistreat them. Not if I want to get to this position. No. David had plenty of times that he could have killed Saul. He said, I will not kill the Lord's anointed God put him in that position and I'm not going to try to get in that position before time by taking him out he will die eventually he tells us in the 20th chapter eventually David says Saul will die or be killed but I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to try to force God's hand and try to make it happen before it's time. I'm going to trust you and let you make me and mold me and shape me into who you want me to be. This is the process. Just coming from being a shepherd, going to king without learning how to lead people. Koshanda will never make a great leader and shall never make a great supervisor will never make a great equal Mahaya anything and shall not he's building up his discernment 
teaching him how to listen to the voice of God, how to obey the voice of God. And even when he cuts off a piece of Saul's skirt and we'll get there, even when he does that, he feels guilty. He says, I shouldn't have even done that. I shouldn't have even touched him at all. It shone that on my high, but he still hadn't had complete control of his flesh and his emotions. So as we go through the process, these things are being broken off of us. God is showing us who we are in our character and he's refining us and making us and shaping us into who he has for us to be. That's right. That's what we're doing during the waiting season. That's right. MC, that's right. MZ, that's what we're doing. We're not waiting idly. We're being refined. Iron is sharpening iron. We're being put in the refiner's fire. That's what's happened. The impurities are being burned out of us. And it is not a process that feels good. It is not a process that we're going to love. That's right. That's exactly right, Pam. That's right, Sister Pam. Our Minister Pam. I'm sorry, the Holy Spirit corrected me, Minister Pam. <laughs> we are having our character built. Oh, that's good. Equal by will. When nobody's watching, God sees our heart. That's right. We're not going to dodge the process. We're not going to try to get out of it. In the midst of it, we say, Lord, what are you trying to teach me? What are you trying to show me? There's enemies all along the path. But we don't get to mistreat them. We don't get to. God keeps us safe. He said, I'll keep you safe from your enemies. He'll tell us how to deal with them. But we don't get to deal with them the same way they deal with us. We, we don't get to. He doesn't want us to be naive, but we don't get to be vengeful either. Welcome, Nabi. Welcome, the music maker. We don't get to do that. We have to respond in ways, equal to Mahai, that the Holy Spirit is calling us to respond in love, and that's not easy. But we can do all things through Christ that strengthens us. But when these people come against us, they, they don't just come against you. Oftentimes they come against your family. They come against people you love. They do things to people you love. When they can't get to you, they'll try to get to them. <laughs> people fight dirty. The enemy will use them to fight dirty against you. But the Lord will keep you and keep everything concerning you. But that does not mean that he does not want us to be aware. He wants us to watch and pray, but he does not want us to be naive. The enemy is seeking whom he can devour, but the people of God are focused on God. As shown on I decree and declare that we will not miss any movement of the Holy Spirit. We will not miss any directions that the Holy Spirit has for us. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for leading and guiding your people into all truth as we continue to move to and through this process, oh God. We thank you for illuminating every step, guiding our feet, Holy Spirit. We thank you that we submit completely to your will. We will not resist the process. We will not resist even when we have to go through adversity and things that are not pleasant and easy oh God we know that all things work together for your good sometimes we have to go back equal to higher to a place that we don't want to go back to David I'm sure he was not jumping for joy to go back to to being a shepherd and, and but the Bible says he went back to help his father so it needed to be done and he was willing to do it. And Korahaya, he was humble enough to know I've been anointed Ikorumahaya for Ikorobohaya for such a time as this. But the time in the spirit is not equal to the time in the natural.
There's an appointed time in the spirit. It could it does not go by the calendar. It's shun The timing of God does not go by by our calendar. For such a time as this. I thank you, Lord, in due season. Due season is a time that's not on the clock. It's a time that's not on the calendar. In due season, you shall reap a harvest. Equal to higher because you will not faint. I will not faint. We will not faint faint. In due season. We thank God for due season. It shall not hire until there is due season where it's harvest. We will continue to plant. We will continue to water. That's right, Minister Sherry. And we will not be weary in well-doing. We will continue through the process. And even when the pests come and the locusts come and the thieves come and the sun is beating down us, we will continue to plant plant and to water until it's harvest time. And when it's harvest season, we'll be ready because our stamina will be ready because we keep working. Our stamina will be ready because we didn't sit down and be like, I'm tired of this. I'm just going to wait on my harvest. No, a harvest it has to be tended over. It has to be watched. It has to be watered. It has to be fertilized. It has to make sure that pests haven't eaten it all and take care care of it. It has to be tended to. We just don't plant and leave it alone and leave it by itself and come back and think we're going to have a harvest. I remember I had tomatoes on, on, on outside and I love to plant things and I always do this. I tell you all this. Welcome Prophet Kelly. <laughs> but then you all know I go out of town for long periods of time. And I went out of town and I had all these cucumbers and they were just so beautiful, but they were little like this big. And I was thinking, oh, when I get home, I'm going to have all these cucumbers. But then um, while I was gone, my car was hit while it was parked. Somebody hit my car. and So I put it in the shop, but I was 500 miles from where I actually live. So I put it in the shop. And it, they said it'll be ready in two weeks. So I thought, okay, I could stay another two weeks. I could just stay with my mom, stay another two weeks. That two weeks turned into three weeks, turned into four weeks, turned into five weeks, turned into six weeks. I'm like, I gotta go home, right? And they just did, it was just a long, 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 long process. And I said all that to say, I had been tending to those cucumbers, like watering them. <laughs> I have been, been watering them. I had bought a little trestle, right? And I was hanging the stuff up because I'm like, oh, this is just going to be so beautiful when I get back. When I got back, it was all dried up. <laughs> it was just pitiful. They had shrunk and, you know, they had gotten bigger, but then you could tell that all of them. <laughs> That's right. But they had just collapsed out and it was just the sun had just beat them and they had just dried up. That's what happens when we go off and leave something. Even if it's planted and it's growing, when we don't tend to it intentionally or unintentionally, I got distracted. I got sidetracked. So it doesn't have to be intentional neglect, right? It is. It, it could be something that distracts you or something that impedes you from going. But we. This is where discernment comes in, and we say, "Oh no, I need to get back to where God assigned me to be." The enemy threw this monkey wrench in my program, but I got to get back. That's right. I missed the season. They had grown, and then when I got back, I could see that they had just collapsed out and died, dried up. They had, they had gotten much bigger, but in that time, there wasn't anybody here to water them and tend to them. And they were dead by the time I got back. So I didn't have one cucumber. And so I always love to plant things. And then I'm always traveling. <laughs> you know, Miss Martha. That's right. I missed harvest season. <laughs> they transitioned. I'm <laughs> so funny. <laughs> you know, I said I'm going to have to wait. Amen. To like, you know. Another time, another season in life where, where I don't live by myself. <laughs> and then, you know, I can have some help. You know, I like gardening and all of that, but Lord knows. And I start traveling and then it's like, oh no. <laughs> 
but you know I do want to pray for those people who wanted prayer but that's what happens it, it you know it happens in in life and it happens in the spirit sometimes we get distracted sometimes something happens sometimes something comes in and then we miss the season Ikoto Baha'i blessings to you Luke 70 <laughs> <laughs> that's what happens so praise God <laughs> amen <laughs> yeah we need to I, I do love to plant stuff and then I but I love to travel too so I'm always going 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 somewhere and um, you know I have to get I don't know have an irrigation system or something to be able to keep them alive until I get back so but if anybody wants prayer, let me know before we go. But we're going to continue. I know I started getting into. Oh, Nabi. God is so good. I just believe God healed her. I believe that with all of my heart. I believe it with all of my heart. I absolutely believe it. I give all praise to the Most High God. I am just so overjoyed. I am so so happy uh, many of you were on here when when Nabi asked not just me but you know we all prayed for her we all prayed for her mom and I just give God glory because you know that's that's the promise of God Ikorobo just one of the many promises of God Ikorobo Koshan I'm so happy I'm so happy I'm just so happy I just uh, it just made my day <laughs> Yes, Marlo. <laughs> I will. I'm I just he is a healer. I just I, I I'm just overjoyed. I'm so happy. I'm so happy. I just it just made my day. Before I pray for you, Marlo and um Luke. I just have to give another testimony. My good friend Joyce, I got to have lunch with her the other day and it was just such a blessing. God healed her as well of stage four cancer. And it, it's just every time I see her, I'm just overjoyed. <laughs> I'm just overjoyed. It just it just brings me just great joy. You know, we overcome by the blood of the lamb and by the word of our testimony. And I'm so glad that you came back and testified. If you want to say anything I'll bring you on, you know, if you want to say anything audibly, I'll bring you, bring you on with the, you know, you can bring people on now. Um, if you want to say anything, Nabi, I, I will um, include you on the scope if you want to say anything else. But I'm so glad you came back because it encourages people um, that are going through to be reminded that God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore he is a healer was a healer always shall be a healer the creator of all you know I, i'm just so glad so amen we all rejoice in the lord i'm just it just made my day okay we're gonna pray for marlo right now and then remind me um remind me i don't want to forget to pray for your son but remind me i'm gonna pray for marlo now and then luke and then pray for your son Sister um, Marlo, you know, there's just been an attack against you. Um, you know, sometimes there's just things that we go through and then there's other things that just are, um, I don't say this often, there, there are things that are truly demonic. And I'm not talking about you being demonic, I'm talking about this attack. Um, because it's one of those kind of attacks that's like a simultaneous domino. It's, it's almost like before you get get one thing handled, something else happens. And and part of it, you know, I just hear the Lord saying that He has your full attention. You know, sometimes God allows things to happen, but he's, I hear him saying he has your full attention. You, this trial is part of what has and what is making you the mature woman in God that he's called you to be. 
even though this this is 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 a really intense thing God is allowing it and, and, and using it to not just mature you but is going to transform your family because it's not something that just is attacking you it's it's sort of multifaceted in that way where it's not just you it's, it's your, your family's involved as well being attacked but it is one of those attacks that I cannot rebuke and because of that, it's one of those things that we have to go through, but knowing that God is with you. Um, when, you know, Jesus was going through the wilderness, you know, he was led there by the Holy Spirit. And that's sort of the, the, the same experience I'm seeing in the Spirit as though... You know, God doesn't want you to think if I hadn't have done this, this wouldn't have happened. And I could have escaped this if we hadn't have done that. And if we hadn't have made this decision to move here, then this wouldn't have happened. One way or another, God allows things to occur to have for his will to be done in our lives. So he doesn't want you to, to think, well, if I hadn't done that, this would have happened. If I hadn't moved here, this he doesn't want you to think that it is just part of what he's allowing, not just you, but your family, because he's reshaping destiny. It, he's reshaping e even the way things are understood about God in your family, because it hasn't always been like this understanding of salvation and the way things are working in the kingdom of God the way you see them now that is not the lineage I see from your family and God is is shaking up things and he's changing things and it's a drastic change from what historically has been believed but because he chose you it had to be a radical shift to get you from one thing one kingdom out of that kingdom of darkness we all came out of it so I'm not making point of you I'm saying out of that kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light and it's a radical pulling away so just know that God is with you he's teaching you how to call on him and you're going to see him respond in ways and it's just going to amaze you when you call on God he's going to let you see him in ways you've never seen and you are going to know without a shadow of a doubt that you serve a true and living God and you're going to be a great testimony wherever you're from you're going to be able to give testimony of a truth that this is real because a lot of people you know is like oh that stuff's not real no you're going to be able to be a true witness to some people that this is real so God bless you I pray that you are encouraged and you continue steadfastly in faith because God is truly with you and has ordained your steps God bless you you're welcome you're welcome um um, Luke, I think it was. You know, I just see you as one of those people that people have counted out. Like, oh, mm -mm. you know, when people think of people who are going to be used by God, they don't think of me. <laughs> They don't they don't think of you, you know, when when people, you know, decide that, oh, these people look like a pastor, they look like a preacher. They most certainly don't think of you. They don't think of me either. So I'm not just saying that I'm just saying what I see in the spirit. They're not they don't think of you. But God chooses people and he chooses who he will use and he chooses and it's his anointing that chooses and that chose you and so no matter what people say no matter what they think God has selected you and he has a work for you to do you have a special insight into the Bible and you have wisdom that you you have not been taught you you have not been taught in an official capacity the way I have but yet you have an understanding 
of the Bible that many people don't have. That's right, Nabi. Don't look to the natural. You you, you have uh, 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 understanding and God's going to continue. The Holy Spirit will continue to teach you. It's like the Holy Spirit sits with you and teaches you the word of God. You don't have the instruction that I've had. I've had very structured, you know, sort of ordered uh, way. But the Holy Spirit, as you study, will will just unveil to you because you you'll just ask God in a simple voice like what does this mean and God will show you what it means even if he has you turn to another scripture or just shows you equal or tells you what it means and so just know that he's doing this for a reason and that you know he doesn't want you to look to con conventional avenues and ways for your gift to be utilized because it's not it's going to be in a way that you don't expect. Like I never expected. I remember somebody prophesied to me like 20 years ago, you will be an internet preacher. I was like, I don't, what is that? <laughs> like, there's no such thing. <laughs> so, you know, sometimes we think, I don't know what in the world, you know, but it isn't for us to figure out how, you know, it will unravel and how it will. But I see you teaching. I don't know how and how God will do it, but he is pouring into you so that you can pour out. And so be encouraged with that. But no matter who says no, God's already said yes. So God bless you in that. Um, it was somebody's son. Somebody said pray for their son. Um, you welcome. God bless you. Amen. <laughs> Okay, uh, Did your son have an injury? I I I'm seeing an injury with him. I'm gonna pray for him, but I am seeing an injury. I send it in What's what's his name? You can just put his nickname if you don't want to put his his whole name. Um, but Kian, okay. Ikoromahaya. We just I, saints pray with me as we speak over every tormenting spirit that is. I, you know, I just see a massive spirit of confusion that has come on him and even things that he used to know, he doesn't know anymore. And you know, I just see him getting lost and, and you know, just very, very confused. But I bind every spirit of confusion and torment that's come against him in the name of Jesus. I take authority over every foul spirit. And I, I just speak healing because I, I do see he had some kind of injury. I don't know if he hit his head at some point. But I see some kind of injury um, to the to the to the brain so Lord I just speak healing right now in the name of Jesus you were wounded for his transgressions and bruised for his iniquity and the chastisement of his peace was upon you Lord and by the stripes that were laid on Jesus Kian is healed we intercede he did he did I keep seeing an injury to his head to his brain because this this came out of nowhere like all of a sudden and he was not like this before and it just he just came it wasn't like a progressive thing it just was like that but I thank God for giving you the wisdom and insights for how to deal with him whether giving you the supernatural strength and ability 
Oh my God, mi koro boko shanda shente de mokosi karama asan de mahaya. We just speak healing in the name of Jesus. O shanda de mokosi koro boko shi karama asan de mokosi karama asita rasha. Eto robo koro boko sanda in the mahaya de mokohaya. You know, if you have the ability to take him to. um you know, medically, economy be evaluated, but make sure you mention that because this this did not come out of nowhere, and his behavior is so odd now. His behavior, shanda, but it is economy is an attack, and on my but equal we speak over him in the name of Jesus. The enemy will not economy interrupt his future, will not cancel his future. We cover him with the blood of Jesus. And in a Mahaya, that's right, we speak divine reversal. And if somebody said, I agree with you, heal his brain stem and, and reduce swelling in his brain and any bleeding that might be there, we curse the very roots of it in the name of Jesus. We speak divine healing. We intercede on his behalf and we cancel every demonic assignment over his life. In the name of Jesus, and we thank God, we believe it so. In Jesus' name, it cannot be otherwise. And Lord, we thank you. For more and more testimonies and reports of your healing virtue, your healing power, O oh God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. And we rejoice and, and give you praise, O oh God. Thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. And, and and the enemy, don't allow the enemy to make you fear like, oh, my God, I'm going to have to spend the rest of my life taking care of him. Don't don't allow the enemy to, you know, make you start going in that direction. We just touch and agree with you in the name of Jesus that for divine reversal. We decree and declare it in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. I think that's all of the people that ask for prayer. I'm so glad you all have joined me. That's right. Don't give him no inch. That's right. Divine turnaround in the name of Jesus. Amen. Pleading the blood of Jesus over the whole family. We agree with you. Stay connected to the people of God. Stay connected to us. We all want to pray. We are a family here together. Believe in God together. Welcome Lady Crystal. Believe in God together. One can put a thousand to a flight. Two can put ten thousand to a flight. And we stand together in the spirit realm. I believe in God with you. Amen. Amen. So people of God, we are on a... That's right. I believe the report of the Lord. That's right. By will. We believe the report of the Lord. Um, so we started in 1 Samuel 16. <laughs> that's right. They. That's right. Speak the word, Miss Martha. We began in 1 Samuel 16, so we're going to keep going. So read 1 Samuel 16, if you can read 17, because we're going to stay continuing to talk about um, going from anointment to appointment and the, looking at the process of David, but also looking at the other people in David's life, whether that's Jonathan, who... Um, you know, who helps him and becomes his best friend or whether it's Saul, King Saul, who tries to kill him or whether it's David's brothers or whether it's David's wife or, you know, a lot of the other players, the other people in the army. We just, just want to look at a lot of the things that happens in this story because we want to understand better the process of, of how when God's anointing us and when he has anointed us before we get to the place of promise, 
what it is that can happen in the process and even once we get there that some of the adversity that we may face and so we we just thank God for understanding better giving us a better understanding so that in this time of preparation we we don't bemoan the process but that we rejoice because we know that it is all working together for good for them that love the Lord and who are called according to his purpose so thank you all for joining me it's such a blessing to always have you with me. I look forward to seeing you all. We are on a good schedule here every Tuesday at 4 p.m., Thursday at 6 p.m. Sometime I'm a little late. I'm working on it. <laughs> But that's the schedule. Amen. So for those who may watch by replay, if you need to contact me, you can find me at RevRuby.com. And I think that's it. So if God told you to sow a seed into the ministry, you can find the information on the bio or on the website. Good night, everybody. May God bless you and keep you. I will see you on Tuesday. May God bless you and keep you. Amen. Thank you for encouraging me. Um, the music maker and all of you is such a blessing to be with you. May God continue to bless you all and keep you. May you continue to walk in the ways and the wisdom of God. May the anointing of God carry you everywhere that he has for you to go. Blessings to you, Pastor Willow. Blessings to you, by Will. Thank you so much for encouraging me. I will see you Tuesday at 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Good night.